When Ryan says when it's time to begin, it's on the review but round with John Pollock and waiting the A team that makes sense of these things we see in the ring every week on TV. It's review around for Monday night, then load a Tuesday morning from the Fight Network site. It's review around for Monday night on USA now on the John and Wei take the mic. Welcome to Review Raw. I am John Pollock with Wei Ting on the Fight Network. Welcome. This is it? Just, don't you see that little logo in the corner? Oh yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. What's this, what does that ticker say down there? Uh, nothing actually. We don't have it. Oh, that's why I can't <laughs> see it. It looks. Uh, we don't have it on. TV it's like it's anymore. gone. Why do we get somebody, rid of the ticker? Somebody hasn't been watching the channel. But yes, I have very much. We, we completely gone. Yeah. On everything. Yeah. Why? What was the decision? It's, our boss just one day decided. Oh, I don't, like the don't ticker. Don't really need this anymore. Uh, yeah, I didn't mind the ticker, but. Uh, you know, we, we've been airing a lot of UFC lately, and I guess uh, some people, you know, I remember back when wrestling was on the score. Yes. Uh, on, you know, now it's Sportsnet 360, but it used to be on the score, and I was a kid, and I just like. Did it drive I, you nuts? I would record my wrestling. Like, I was. Oh, me too, on a, on a VHS. Yeah, and I wanted like pristine, clean images of my pro wrestling, and so I actually wrote into the score. I sent an email to like this, whatever, <laughs> info at the score or something. Telling him, asking him if they could take down the ticker during the pro wrestling. I'm sure I still have this email. You but probably I, I just, it probably reached the desk of Greg Sansoni. Yeah. Look just, at this nerd. <laughs> exactly what he would definitely what, what said. What do you think your letter said? Like, what was the gist of it? Oh, uh, I probably worded it like I probably wrote, wrote like a whole page about like explaining why. Yo, <laughs> the hell. Anyway, and that ticker, so. it's squashing the pixelation. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But I'm sure there may be some kids out there who are taping everything on the Fight Network, including shows like this, that just want a perfectly clean image. They don't want it. Do people it. save shows anymore on, like, just permanently save on your, your DVR? I, I love so. to go through and just clean out stuff. I hate when stuff is just stuck in my recording pile. Well, but you, if you think about it, how often did you go back to rewatch your VHSs? Oh, rarely. Yeah. It was just, just, but just... it was also with the knowledge that, man, I might... What other way can I watch this? Whereas now, I mean, you could find any clip on online yeah. if, it's, if it's of any value. Mm -hmm. I mean, Raw is going to be up on YouTube tomorrow. It's probably up already, actually. Yeah, so go watch Raw if you haven't seen it already. Yeah. Watch it illegally, and then you can come back and uh, watch us. Hopefully, you're paying for this channel. Yeah. Or you're watching for free online. Whatever. Who cares? Yeah, whatever. whatever. Uh, if you do watch the Fight Network Tuesday nights at 9 p.m., uh, House of Hardcore is uh, winding down because uh, they've been running weekly Tuesday nights on the Fight Network leading up to their debut in Toronto at the Ted Reeve Arena. And we're going to give away a pair of tickets mm -hmm. as we speak. All you have to do is answer the question, what is the opening match on Tuesday night? That would be tonight on House of Hardcore. What's the opening matchup? List okay. the matchup, tweet at Law Radio, and use the hashtag Law H O H, so I can find it, and we'll pick a winner, and you'll have a pair of tickets to the Ted Reeve Arena next Saturday. Now I'm always going to get an idiot who lives in Australia that's going to apply for this. So only uh, submit an answer if you can actually go to the show. Yeah, there is nothing that pisses me off more, whether it is on the law or any other contest, of people who will it, they win a contest. With, oh, can't use the tickets, man. Sorry, you're an the idiot. Worse. You're an idiot. Why would you do that? Why would you? take other people's charity like that you know Just, it's like robbing it's like robbing from the the donation box isn't it it's exactly like that it's just as bad it's theft yeah it's it's basically you're trying to commit theft <laughs> totally it's the total same mind frame of a criminal it's uh, terrorism let's be honest death penalty <laughs> done that problem is eradicated yeah. So if you want to go to House of Hardcore, I'm sure there'll be a death match <laughs> happening. Hashtag Law H O H. Yes, July 18th, House of Hardcore, Ted Reeve Arena. Are you going to be going to that show? I I think so. If I'm here, yeah, I'd love to. It is uh, headlined by Team 3D and the Young Bucks. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a loaded card. It'll yeah. be a very good show. I'm looking forward to it. All right, we're going to get into Raw from Monday night at the Allstate Arena in Chicago, Illinois. This was quite the crowd on Monday night. Mm -hmm. I mean, these three-hour Raws, I have. If I didn't praise great crowds enough, my God, do great crowds make the difference between a passable Raw and a great Raw. And the combination of 
a big angle, an awesome main event, and a tremendous crowd uh, made this a pretty pretty good Raw by three hour standards. By the time that the show ended, I ha- I will agree with you, but there was definitely man, a lull. I'll I say, will I'll totally say, like, give it to you. Honestly, the first two hours of this show, I didn't care if this was uh, you know the best crowd post Mania, whatever. Like no crowd was going to save this show. There I'll was give a you lot that. of filler on this show. I really messed up my viewing because you know you and I have it kind of down to a science of when. We start watching Raw so that it's always – you're never watching it live. Yeah. Dude, I was live by like 10 after 9. So I was like, how did I screw this up to this degree? And it was just – oh, I was just finding a million things to do during the <laughs> commercial breaks. Like I would mute it. I'd put on a podcast. I'd get up. I'd walk around. Uh, I'd see, I want to see, sh- see that show, how John Pollock trains. It's, it sounds like it's like a countdown special, like a UFC countdown special. How does John Pollock – that go through the stresses of watching one episode of Raw. It was a tough one on Monday, at least until the final hour. The final hour was was very good, and this was a Raw that it was interesting to watch because last week they did a horrible number. It was 3,460,000 that tuned in on the USA Network, and that was a really – it was our lowest number of the year and one of their lowest numbers over the last decade plus – so it was interesting to see how they turned things around. The biggest one being John Cena was put in the main event slot this week, which he has not been for, geez, I don't know when the last time this guy closed off Raw. But mm-hmm. they decided not only are we putting him in the main event, we're going to do a 30-minute wrestling match to close the show. So I think the number is going to be really interesting, in particular that third hour um, of building up the U.S. title challenge. Mm-hmm. But it started off with Brock and Heyman coming out. And this was Paul Heyman cu- cutting pretty much a religion-themed promo. He called Lesnar the Lord thy God, and he is not a God of love, family, charity, or for- forgiveness, but rather the God of violent retribution. Very ominous. Is, is that a Bible verse? I have no clue. I don't think so. I think he was just... Uh, I don't know who the god of violent retribution would be. I think uh, that's his next T-shirt. It'll be one of the like the Dead Sea Scrolls with Brock's face on it, Whoa. coming through the scroll. You know what he needs? He needs that beard back, a Brock Lesnar beard. You got to save that. I mean, this is a long contract he's got. The beard phase will be it'll be needed at some point. I don't know if now though that with an axe mm. and a, a toque, yeah. lumberjack Brock. <laughs> Uh, He says that Brock will be the sword to pierce the shield of Seth Rollins. And then he brings up Lesnar ending the streak of The Undertaker. And the crowd did not like this. Mm -hmm. They're like, we love you, Brock, but we did not love that streak Mm -hmm. ending, even this much time removed. And Heyman reacted to this almost as if it was unexpected. It was almost like a rare, you know, fumble from Paul Heyman. But he quickly realized it and, you know, reacted to it appropriately. Yeah, this was a very pro Brock crowd, but they were not going to go anti Undertaker for the sake of this promo. And then he brought up Lesnar destroying Cena and bringing up Reigns and said in all those instances, he didn't respect any of these men, but he never showed them disrespect. But in the case of Rollins, he both disrespects Rollins and does not hold any respect for him. And that Rollins broke the 11th commandment. Thou shalt not intentionally provoke Lesnar. Mm Mm-hmm. And then, Is that a Bible verse? Um, it will be now okay. in the Heyman version. Mm-hmm. And says he will take back the title of Battleground, but the beatings and suplexes begin tonight at the Cathedral of Retribution and the City Hall of Suplex City, the All-State Arena. Cheer, sheep, cheer. <laughs> and they did. And a big chant of Suplex City reverberated throughout the All-State Arena. It was uh, it's fun hearing Paul Heyman cut babyface promos now for Brock Lesnar because he's somebody who you know is just such a natural heel that when it comes time for him to elicit babyface reactions for Brock Lesnar, you wonder how he does it, and you know you watch him and it's really his delivery is exactly the same, and that's why I think you know this is this guy is so believable. There's nothing that drastic about his character change between heel and babyface. Um, in fact, I think people like him because he is such a good heel. So, you know, he's kind of carrying on the same thing. Only thing he's not doing now is, you know, he's not insulting the audience. Instead, he's insulting heels. Yeah, yeah. He's just shifted the focus of his promos, essentially. 
Each week on Review of Raw, pay attention for the secret question. You can tweet the answer at Law Radio every week for your chance to win a t-shirt from Pro Wrestling Tees. A revolution has begun. Passion. History. Vengeance. You don't want to miss what awaits. Kane was not on tonight's show because he is off on vacation in Hawaii. So they had Photoshop pictures of Kane on his vacation. Yep. Someone was tasked with this job over the past week to explain Kane's absence. Yeah. 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 And yeah. then I have, I have nothing to say. No, nope, there was really nothing. But Photoshop they decide to show these throughout the night. And then <laughs> apparently the WWE has acquired a license for an After Effects program because they used it for J and J's road trip over the past week indicating where they went, including Hershey, Pennsylvania, for the SmackDown tapings last week, and then arriving in Chicago. They're making good use of their uh, Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. How long would this have taken? Uh, I don't know. A good a good After Effects graphics guy would have done it in one afternoon, I'm sure. Wow. Someone it just seemed like a lot of time for such a nothing uh, graphic package. Yeah. It was more amusing than the Photoshopping. Yes. Yeah. A lot, a lot more uh, creativity to yeah. it. They noted over 20 million people have now downloaded the WWE app for free. Quite the number. So you have roughly uh, 17 million freeloaders that are not going to buy your network. Oh, what am I saying? Way, way more well, than that. 19 and a half million the, freeloaders. The app is not a substitute, though. Like, you can't get the network. I know that. I'm just saying. They, they trumpet this number. Oh. I mean, we have, uh, what, 1.3 million subscribers and then... Another 18 and a half million have this app. What's what's the holdup? It means nothing. You download the app, but you you don't uh, you don't buy the main feature of the app. Mm. Oh, then we got this match that I I mean the match was what it was, but we had the Miz do ringside commentary. I thought I was going to get a migraine during this match. They went through a commercial break because we just had to get two segments out of Big Show and Ryback. In this non-title match, Miz was just so annoying. He constantly was getting on the apron, goading both men to kill each other, and then he would be chased off. Ryback took him down with a shoulder block, meat hook clothesline, and then missed the top rope frog splash. Flyback was not connecting with his target on this particular instance. And then Show hit a choke slam, and then an elbow drop off the second turnbuckle, and Miz ran in to attack Big Show and Ryback, and we got a no contest. As they get up, they cornered the Miz and proceeded to hit him with a shell shock and choke slam, and then Ryback knocked down the big show. Well, it was Miz's job here to be to be obnoxious, and I thought he did a good job of that. I, I will say, I think I'd prefer him being here than to just see this match on its own. I think he didn't, you know, add something because the match itself was very dull. Um, He's, I think The Miz is entertaining right now in this incarnation of his heel character. Um, um, you know, the, the feud is what it is. It's not It's not a feud that's going to make anybody. It's just one. It's really the first step in Ryback's, you know, IC title push. Then we got the teaser for Total Divas, which is moving to Tuesday nights. So you now get two hours of WWE programming on a, a Tuesday night with Tough Enough. Which Michael Cole calls the most controversial season yet. Uh oh. We got a uh, pole dancing, a sex tape storyline, water tossed on Naomi at a dinner table, the Dolph and Nikki digging up some old uh, past mm -hmm. relationship. When did they date? I I don't know. I'm not quite sure. But the the indication here was that Dolph still has a thing for Nikki. Hmm. Wrong political maneuver yeah, for what, what does, Dolph Ziggler. What does Lana think of that? And then Road Dog is admonishing Paige, saying, that's strike two. You know what strike three means. So either this is Paige with a, a warning or two drug test failures on this season of Total Divas. I thought, I thought they were hinting at the sex tape being strike They three. kind of did. I'm sure it's a swerve, though. 
and yeah. it'll be like I don't know. <laughs> it'll be who's, a Seamus sex tape. It'll be uh, uh well, who's the uh, Mark Carano? <laughs> Mark Carano, <laughs> the talent tape? relations guy. <laughs> a Mark Carano sex tape. Yeah, that's disgusting. That's the grossest thing you've ever said. <laughs> oh my god. Catch the entire live audio wrestling network of podcasts. We have daily shows up at fightnetwork.com and liveaudiowrestling.com. You can also listen for free on iTunes by subscribing to Live Audio Wrestling. And you can also listen on the free Fight Network and Stitcher apps. Then we had uh, J&J driving by Wrigley Field earlier in the day in the rain, and they call this place a dump and just continue going on to some other destinations. And what a have series you, have, of vignettes this was. Have you been to, to Wrigley Field? I have been. Is it a dump? Uh, it's, a, it's an old field. I mean, it was... It's a dump with charm. Yeah, it's an awesome area, though. I mean, the whole area around Wrigley Field is fantastic if you ever mm-hmm. go to Chicago. Yeah, I'd love to go. Bree and... Bri and Page were our next match with Naomi and Tamina watching in the back. Nikki Bell and Fox are in the corner of Bree. Uh, Page fired up on Bree, hit a pair of clotheslines, a super kick, and then Bree missed a missile drop kick. Bree is thrown into Nikki on the apron, and then Fox gets kicked off, but then Bree just recovered instantly and hit an X Factor, pinning Page in 311, and then they triple team Page after the match, and Nikki hit the rack attack. Mm hmm. You know, it was it was a Brie Bella match. I mean, uh, I think we're just gonna get this match over and over again until they do the the reveal of who's coming to help. There's Paige. been a, there's been a lot of hype online on Twitter about you know um, there were a lot of rumors in particular today about them possibly bringing up a, a bunch of NXT uh, uh, women, and um, it certainly feels like that's what they're building towards with this. You know, just having uh, this this three woman team beating up Paige every single week. Well, you get the indication it's going to be two because they've they've inserted an Alicia Fox here for a reason. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that lends you to believe there will be two women. Three also is, you know, a faction. Two is just a team. You know what they'll call Paige's team? Mm, a book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the novel. <laughs> the She-Hold. Roman Reigns and Sheamus are next. <laughs> We've got our episode can title we, that we week. copyright that? Can we ask uh, Pro Wrestling Tees to make that shirt? <laughs> <laughs> Roman Reigns and Sheamus. Um, this match was highlighted by going to a commercial break as Reigns is selling on the floor and the crowd started chanting for JBL. That is their universal sign of disinterest. Yeah, yeah. Sheamus was in control. He spent an inordinate amount of time fixing his hair to spike it after the break. Reigns comes back with a clothesline, hits a flying one, taking him off his feet. They fought on the floor. There's booze for Reigns as he hits the Samoan drop and then misses a Superman punch as Sheamus hits the Irish curse. And then Sheamus comes off the top into a Superman punch in midair when Bray's music hits and he proceeds to come down in the dark with his lantern and Reigns attacks this figure on the aisleway, but then takes off the person's wig and it is not Bray Wyatt. And instead, Bray appears on the screen laughing and says, anyone but you, as the lights then come on in the arena. And in the dark, the referee has been counting this whole time, counts out Roman Reigns. Sheamus wins by count out. Yet again, Roman Reigns looks like an idiot in some of these. Like, Bray Wyatt plays this guy like a fiddle in all of these segments. Yeah. Yeah. He is um, Dustin Poirier to Bray Wyatt's Conor McGregor. It's just... He's just getting under the skin and making this guy look foolish. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, I mean, I, I, I wonder how they they would, would do this build without having Roman, you know, succumb to, to Bray's. The whole storyline is that Bray is getting the, the psychological advantage over Roman Reigns. And how do you do that without, you know, doing stuff like this? I, I have, I will say I have been disappointed in the feud. I mean, when they first kind of, you know, teased us with the possibility of a Bray Wyatt child kidnapper angle, I, I thought... Yeah, they've never gone back to the daughter. I thought this would have been, like, a real cool chance to make this guy even creepier, like like an actual scary character than what he currently is, but they really haven't done anything with him. What did you want him to do, like, go, you know... I don't know. Steal I, I, the I child? Don't you don't, you don't want to know what I'm... I'm 
I had some ideas Whoa. I might have. Darkness that is right. way Ting's mind. But what I, what I mean is, you know, like I, I just thought that this was a real chance to explore the, the Bray Wyatt character, which I don't think they've done. Seamus is celebrating with the Money in the Bank briefcase when Randy Orton's music hits. The newly engaged Randy Orton. He's going yep, for uh, marriage who? marriage number two. Well, his girlfriend. Okay. And he cool. runs down, attacks Seamus. Orton gets sent into the post. They go into the ring, and Orton hits him with an RKO. And Michael Cole yells, Orton has not forgotten what Seamus has put him through. <laughs> I have. I could not for the life of me remember what these two had to deal with. I assume Seamus did something to him to take him out. Do you remember? Uh, no. I, I have no recollection of what was going on. But I can't say I was uh, at the edge of my seat as Orton got his uh, supposed revenge. No, no recollection of what happened. Orton between these seemed two. to get a, a, an okay reaction. You know, he definitely got a big reaction for the RKO. Um, it's it's really the, the only redeeming value ab- about these matches. I think they mentioned the network is now available in Italy and over 175 countries. Triple H is in his office when Rollins walks in. This is the only appearance of Triple H all show long. He comes in with the security and asks Rollins what his plans are for Lesnar tonight, and Rollins wants to ask Hunter his advice on what he should do. Hunter says you should leave Battleground as champion, and Rollins says he already has Battleground in the bag. And Hunter says to ignore Lesnar and allow him to make a mistake, but then contradicts himself, saying, no, you should do something so unconventional, and Paul Heyman gave you the template of never intentionally provoking the beast, so Rollins comes to the conclusion he needs to call out Brock Lesnar tonight when he's in an emotional state, and no one will expect him to call out Brock Lesnar. This is his grand plan. Apparently, Rusev and Summer Rae also had a similar plan to call out Lana in her emotional state because they were in the ring after the break with uh, Rusev's jacket sponsored by Bulgaria. He calls Summer Rae hot and submissive and then apologizes as the crowd chants for Lana. He apologizes for wasting a year of his life on that snake Lana, the cold fish Lana. And says for the people taking her under his wing, he apologizes for all of them as well. He says Ziggler isn't on the same integrity level as him. Rusev is more better looking and more passionate. And then refers to Summer as Hot Summer. Hot Summer. Hmm. And then kisses her hand when Ziggler and Lana come out. Ziggler asks if Rusev's brain is also broken. And says everything Rusev has received in the WWE is because of Lana. And he says, you know that song you butchered? You don't know what you've got till it's gone? Well, it's gone. (laughs) And I found her. Who wrote this? This is so terrible. (laughs) Summer is upset and gets into Lana's face. And then Rusev attacks Ziggler with his crutch and then kicks him with the bad foot. Ziggler is out. Rusev proceeds to take off his walking boot. And it looks like he has been healed. Perhaps uh, Reverend... uh, Heyman performed a ceremony in the back, a miracle cure of his broken ankle, and it is now healed. Could be. So he stomps on Ziggler. Summer tosses Lana to the floor. As Rusev continues to attack Ziggler, Ziggler finally fights back, but then Rusev takes the other crutch and drives it into the mat and into Ziggler's throat, and Rusev celebrates his accomplishment of potentially cracking this man's trachea and as Ziggler is dead on the floor he continues to attack him with the crutch as they have a stretcher out I thought they kind of overdid it here I thought the crutch was enough dude this whole thing just dragged I mean I'm not just even talking the terrible acting here in the terrible uh, high school drama I'm I'm talking about the beatdown it it just went on too long and they replayed this thing like three times afterwards this is the classic example of hitting a guy with 15 chair shots when one really great one that the guy sells is way more effective. And you did this deal with the, the crutch to the, to the throat. That should be a big injury angle. And then we continued to do it. Uh, I didn't think this was bad. I thought this was fine. Um, I didn't like it, man. I, I didn't like the entire segment. I mean, well, the, hopefully this means Rusev is healed and we can at least progress. Um, no, this feud is not doing anything I, for I me. Hope, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I hope we could just... 
It's gonna be. I, a, I just, it's gonna be a hot summer. I'm, I'm trying to. Th- I'm trying to think what could happen in the world that would just like end this. You know, maybe like some type of a. Uh, um, Maybe like one of them gets a uh, you know not a very serious illness um, and has to leave. Like um, what's a very like a very like a uh, um, what 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 was a uh, what's wrong polio, with you today? polio? Like uh, you know what if they just had polio? Oh, I'm sure yeah. they had polio shots in Bulgaria. <laughs> okay, well maybe there's a new branch of polio that could be easily cured. Version of hepatitis maybe. Yeah, just to get them just to get them to end this cuz this is not the really kind that bad. would end your career, but one that would uh, at Take least Take them off for like a month. Okay, just just Oh, well, maybe Rusev breaks his other ankle now. I mean, I wouldn't want that either. He's it's, been putting all the pressure on his good one. It's been overcompensating. I don't want anyone to get really hurt. But okay, I just, just want polio. That's I just, fine. <laughs> I just, a life-altering disease. I just want this to end, okay? Cuz um they're doing all this Listen, prior to this, Rusev was just uh he was like, I'd say, um, honestly, like it looked like he was like number two heel, maybe even one of the top heels in the company. He was a monster, and now all of a sudden you're putting your monster in this Archie comic. You know, why why the hell is this guy fighting over girls? It's it's not something I think anybody wants to see. It doesn't benefit his character. It has not benefited Lana, Dolph, anybody. Dolph is coming off the worst of anybody of these four. Uh, he's stretchered out and taken off in an ambulance. That was all for Ziggler tonight. This Wednesday on Review Away, it's a look at Conor McGregor with the six-part Notorious series. It's a thorough review of Conor McGregor's career heading into the biggest fight of his career this Saturday at UFC 189. Tune in to Review Away Wednesday morning at LiveAudioWrestling.com and subscribe on iTunes. Oh, Dallas comes out and refers to Ziggler's injury, saying bad things happen to bad people. Bo Dallas and Dean Ambrose, it was fairly quick. Um, this was the most heat a Bo Dallas match has ever had, as they were chanting for him. They were going back and forth with chants for Ambrose and Dallas. Dallas had him down and starts jogging around him in the ring, misses a knee drop. Ambrose fights back, hit a running bulldog, a top rope elbow drop, slingshot clothesline, dirty deeds, and pinned him in three minutes. Dean Ambrose is just there. Yep. He's like in a hacksaw Jim Duggan kind of role at he's, the moment. He's cooled down. He's just yep. there. J&J continued their road trip where they were stuck in traffic. And that was the end of our vignettes of J&J security out in their ride. But they'll probably have plenty of time to yeah. uh, joyride. No what? No, they won't because their car is going to meet an unfortunate demise. Mm-hmm. R-Truth and King Barrett. I hate this feud. I oh. want it to be over with so badly. Uh, yeah. This went two, through two a commercial break. Two guys who definitely need, definitely need some polio. Oh. <laughs> Truth dives off the second turnbuckle into a bull hammer and Barrett pins him. Cole asks if this will put an end to the feud. I hope it does. That's all I'm going to say about it. I just ha- did not like this show up until this point. No, really? it was... <laughs> what was good about this show up until this point? Okay. Like, we're we're going to get to the big angle. Seth Rollins comes out, and he's carrying an axe handle. And then J&J come out in the Cadillac, and they park it at the front entrance, and they also have axe handles. And my immediate thought— Where do they find these axe handles? um, At the end of an axe. They just removed the blade from it. So they thought an axe was was too much. Probably at the city hall. Yeah. Probably. (laughs) Um, I immediately thought, oh, my God. Brock Lesnar's going to come out, and he's going to have this weapon, and he's going to use it on them. Little did I know how way more dangerous this segment was going to be. They come out, and Rollins says he is going to burn Suplex City to the ground. Lesnar is yesterday's news, and no one on earth can beat Lesnar other than him, which is factually incorrect. It would have been great if Lesnar had gone on this incredible run since his debut, but that is not the case. He asks if Brock Lesnar is the beast or just Paul Heyman's bitch. So Lesnar comes out with Heyman, and Heyman pulls up an equipment box, and there are two axes in here. I feared for the life of Rollins, Mercury, and Noble. I'm like, they can't get crazy with a f***ing axe and Brock Lesnar. 
So then he proceeded to take these axes and destroy the Cadillac. Yeah, you thought he was going to use them on on the people. I thought there was going to be an. A- I thought they were actually going to fight where they tried to subdue him with the axe. And Lesnar, obviously, we're not going to do something with an axe. But Lesnar is reckless, and this segment totally backs yeah, up my f-ing claim. Definitely, I, I don't know if some of this stuff was planned. I can guarantee you it was not. Uh, this car was not exactly selling some of Lesnar's offense at first. I mean, it was a pretty stiff car. But then he put the they're, axe they're through built, the side of the car. They're built to withstand car crashes. Not exactly, you know, something that – they're not exactly movie props. Well, so, I, I, I mean, these scenes always kind of play out a lot smoother in your mind. Like, they play – they these scenes would play out like, like you know, like Street Fighter. Like, like kicking – beating up the car. He still Street put Fighter. this axe through the side of that car. He, it's like, he, you can gimmick the windows. They weren't gimmicking the side of this thing. He, I mean, think about putting an axe through the side of a car. It's, that's not an easy task. Oh, yeah. He, he, he did a very good job. Well, <laughs> he really did. Yeah. He destroyed the Cadillac, so uh, the life expectancy was seven days for the poor Cadillac. Then he ripped off the car door. That was great. I mean, a hell of a visual. Yeah. And then he tossed it onto the ground with violent force, but he wasn't done yet. <laughs> he walked over and picked up this car door. <laughs> And my God, this car door turned into a frisbee. He threw this thing. Like Captain America. And then in midair, the car door separated. The contents of this door separated with half just landing on the ground while the other half sailed into the crowd and hit a fan. Who proceeded to hold up the door, celebrating like, "Wow, look at this! this is really <laughs> I cool. got a Lesnar door." <laughs> yeah. It was the interior of the door, thank goodness, and it wasn't it wasn't the other half. Like, I'm not kidding. This dude's probably going to be fined for this. Perhaps. This was crazy. This was too much. It was this too could much. have been a disaster. Honestly, like he, just even him, you know, breaking breaking the windows with with that axe. I I was. I'm sure worried. the glass was gimmick. They're not WCW stupid like with Bill Goldberg. Okay, well, it it, it, it just I think they. This scene played out awesome. It was great. It played out exactly as unpredictable as you know as as I think in in real life it would have, but uh, watching it, I. I, I definitely had some concerns. But that's what kind of makes these Brock Lesnar segments so special. Is he could kill somebody. He he's just he's very reckless. Like remember that that beatdown with, with the cameraman and, and, and Michael Cole? All that stuff was just like I, I mean, you know it's all scripted, you know it's all planned, but um you wonder how safe any of it actually is. I, I, I totally get what you mean where there's always that element of danger with this guy. But this is way too much. This The throwing of the car door, I agree. Like that, a few years ago, crazy. Batista bladed in a cage match, and he was fined $100,000 for blading when it was banned. Uh, I thought that was outrageous, but Lesnar should be, you know, subject to something here. Like, this was seriously too much. And they're lucky that nothing the, – like, the hard really part of the game. door, had that gone over – Oh, yeah. Like, this could have been – this could have killed somebody. And there's a certain – you know, Brock can be crazy and someone might get hurt. This was a whole nother level. And this was two weeks after he broke a guy's ribs. So I think there's a certain line here, and this was way too dangerous, and they avoided a major, major disaster. Apparently this fan was okay. This was crazy. They showed the replay of this door sailing into the crowd. Yeah. And it just – you were hoping it was going to let, and it just kept going and going. Yeah. I was just, this was one of the craziest moments I've ever seen in a pro wrestling program. <laughs> nuts, man. Like he threw a car <laughs> door across an arena uh. with an audience. <laughs> like, dude, this was nuts. Like, we can laugh about this, but he could have killed somebody. Uh-huh. So that ended the segment and the end of this Cadillac and probably the end of Brock Lesnar involved with any cars or heavy objects. Didn't end the segment, though, because Jane's... Oh, yeah, of course, right. They charged at him. He snapped Noble's arm. So now he has broken ribs and a worked broken arm. He put him in a Kimura. Yeah, he put him in the Kimura and snapped the arm. They should hopefully take this guy off TV for at least a week. Or at least show some signs. Or be on a body cast. Yeah, be worth something. Though he doesn't sell the ribs. 
Yeah, he does. See him calling out Jose Aldo over the past week yeah, for not manning up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah. And then he had, he tossed Mercury onto the car and then chased after Rollins, who ran through the crowd, left the building, and Lesnar posed in the ring with the title to mm-hmm. end the segment. And um, a memorable Brock appearance. Definitely. Definitely. And I was surprised that this wasn't the main event because I think on any other week this would have been. But, you know, with, with all the stuff with Cena, it makes uh, – it's really interesting to, to to see what the ratings will be for this segment in the main event. Sunday night on Live Audio Wrestling, Dan the Mouth Lavransky and Jason Agnew are going to be joined by former WWE performer John Morrison, who's now competing for the Lucha Underground organization. We'll chat with him, Dave Meltzer, and all of your phone calls Sunday night at 11 p.m. Eastern time at liveaudiowrestling.com. Next week on Impact Wrestling... There's a new TNA World Heavyweight Champion, and his name is Ethan Carter III. Is it the beginning of a new era, or will Kurt Angle take back what was once his? Plus, Bram takes on Mr. Anderson, and Bad Blood continues as Robbie E and Jesse Goddard battle it out in a street fight. All this and more, next week on Impact Wrestling. The Lucha Dragons against Big E and Kofi Kingston were next, which featured uh, Titus O'Neil on commentary, mm. where this guy was going out to just steal the segment. Yeah. That was clearly his goal. Darren Young might have gotten one word in during this entire match. Uh, JBL maybe got in two, uh, because this was all Titus from him just going after JBL to starting to do play-by-play, where he was somehow confused thinking play-by-play with JBL's job. It, it was a bit of a train wreck, you know, um, and it, it, it came across like Titus was just really trying a little too hard to get attention. And, you know, who could who could blame him? I mean, this guy's been on the roster for how long? And now now he's finally getting the titles, finally getting a push. But um, it failed to impress me in any way. He just talked a lot here. It was just volume from this guy. Yeah. And <laughs> he does have a personality. He, no. he had but. this one joke where he said a biggie might not make it to the pay-per-view because he has... F F F. Yeah. And I guess he was hoping Cole wouldn't follow up because Cole said, Well, what does that stand for? And it was like this blank stare where he was just trying to make something up and said, Ferocious funk fungus. And Cole just goes, That's horrible. <laughs> like yeah, just moved on. Really bad. Um uh, there was some great action in the ring here. I mm-hmm. in particular Big E and Callisto. Yeah. I would love to see those two get like a six minute match on SmackDown. I think Callisto is just spectacular. Very I mean, underutilized. He he really comes across to me like I mean, you know, for all the stuff that, you know, uh uh Sin Cara, when he flopped when he came in, I really feel like Callisto is your next you know, incarnation of a Rey Mysterio. This guy just moves fantastically if they only gave him a push, which Unfortunately, they really haven't since they've debuted. Sinkar and Kalisto built up to go for these double uh, suicide dives with Sinkara completely missing because Woods pulled Kofi out of the way, so Sinkara just crashed and burned. Big E caught Kalisto with the suicide dive and suplexed him on the floor, and then they hit their finish, which was the assisted big ending with Kofi coming off the turnbuckle, and they pinned Sinkara for the win, and it's... Uh, Biggie or the New Day challenging the primetime players at Battleground for the tag is it, titles. Is it a New Day or the New Day? The New Day. It's the New Day. Okay. Yes. Be sure to check out Live Audio Wrestling on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Follow us at Law Radio, and you can join in on the discussion at lawradio.proboards.com. It's free to sign up for our message board where you get to chat with other law listeners, provide your feedback, and check out all of our archived episodes. They plug the network, and the tagline is, just like Netflix. So we're back to that comparison. Just like Netflix, the WWE Network. Then they showed the uh, the cover reveal for WWE 2K16 and aired the trailer where they're in a desert, and Steve Austin is digging up his old smoking skull title hmm. as he places it on his shoulder, and they announced the game's coming out October 27th. So Steve Austin is on the cover. There's nobody else on the roster, I guess. 
That's it. They're going with Steve Austin yeah. for for sales. For they, 2015. They, I guess they didn't feel confident in. Um, who 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 do you think on the current roster would have been? Uh, they have a very. It, it's believe me, that video game is a big seller for them. So yeah. they put all their their muscle behind yeah. it. And the uh, Rock was on it. Like well, Cena was on year. last year. Rock was on the prior year. Punk. And prior to that was Punk. Yeah. Um, but who, so who's hot on, on on that level? I can't argue with Austin. Yeah. It's a good choice. They showed video highlights of Finn Balor defeating Kevin Owens on the weekend for the NXT title, which leads to John Cena coming out. And he says the people seem a bit upset and asks, is that because Kevin Owens lost the title? And the crowd was largely indifferent despite Cena like trying to bait them into cheering Owens. It was like it was like Cena was trying too hard to be like, oh, you guys must love Kevin Owens and hate me. And the crowd really didn't have much of a reaction to uh, a Kevin Owens mention. Uh, nonetheless, they played a highlight from the match. Yep. Yeah. They said, uh, Cena says he's had many great moments in this arena and tells whoever is going to answer the challenge to bring their A game because this is the All State Arena. Kevin Owens comes out and he says the worst part of Raw every week is when Cena comes out and does the exact same thing and spews the same garbage and says he's going to win the U.S. title. He says he needs the U.S. title now that he's lost the NXT title. And they're getting set for the match when Cesaro interrupts, telling Owens to step aside because he deserves the title shot. And he was ready to make Cena give up last week when Owens cost him the match and tells him to get out of the ring. And Owens proceeds to leave and goes to the back. Mm -hmm. So Cena and Cesaro for the second straight week. Main eventing this week. Main eventing this week, which I think was... Largely a response to the number last week and John Cena being put in a, uh, a big position and building to him all show long and using the U.S. title challenge as the big hook on the show to stick around. They had um, as good, if not a better match this week. I like this match better. This was honestly. this was a great, yeah. great, great match. Um, so many highlights throughout this. Um, we'll just highlight some of them because there, there was so much of this. Um, Cesaro blocking the AA. He landed on his feet, sent, Cesaro, uh, sent Cena up in the air, and Cena came back with a Hurricane Rana. There was Cesaro coming off the middle rope with a spinning uppercut, introducing that to his arsenal. C- Cesaro caught him on the floor and hit a fallaway slam into the barricade. Cena hit a leg slicer off the top. Uh, Cesaro was constantly going for the Cesaro swing, finally did, and then applied a sharpshooter, and then transitioned into a crossface, locking off the arm and then rolling into the middle, uh, similar to how Benoit submitted Hunter at WrestleMania 20. The crossface was a move in this match that they went back to time and time again, so I'm assuming that it will be a signature for Cesaro. Yeah, it seems like it. Uh, Cesaro got up. And uh, this was after, sorry, Cena was able to reverse out of the sharpshooter and applied the STF. Cesaro got out of that. And then the camera was on the Cadillac and just being destroyed. And in the background, you saw Cena going for the springboard stunner. And it's yeah. very rare that the WWE is off to that degree where there's a big spot and the camera's not, it's on the hard they camera. They should have stayed on the They on the should have screwed Cadillac. up longer because this, this was the official end of the springboard stunner and i think we got to take that move and steve austin needs to replace it in the grave that he dug up (laughs) and place it there this move this was horrible this looked horrible and it's the only complaint i'm gonna have about this match this looked terrible it's time to give it up cena it looks bad it's been screwed up enough times that it's a real deterrent to what was an excellent match there there are millions literally millions of other moves that i think could achieve the same effect and uh i don't know why it keeps going to this it looks stupid that said uh that did not ruin the match it was one bad spot Cesaro um, just came back, hit a neutralizer for a near fall, and pretty much just improvised because you had to think he was supposed to take the stunner and it would be a near fall for Cena. And then he applies the crossface again. Cena makes it to the rope. They're fighting on the turnbuckle. Cesaro teases a neutralizer off the second turnbuckle. Cena blocks it, lifts him up for the AA. It was more of almost like a falcon arrow, and lands it and pins Cesaro. They went over 30 minutes, and Cole calls it a classic. This was this was just it was excellent. excellent. It was excellent. an awesome, what? awesome match. There's no way you can say Raw was a thumbs down with a match like this. No, this this match really saved the entire show. This and the car car uh, destruction were, were really good. But I just like I was watching this match and just like thinking how unusual it was for me to see 
great fresh wrestling in the main event of Raw. I feel like it's been such a long time where we just get, you know, stale matchups of guys that we've seen a long time. It's been it's been a while since we've seen like a long great match with a fresh face in somebody like Cesaro. I thought the match was so good, I really didn't want it to end. This was one of the longest matches in Raw history. I know that uh, Cena and Punk had one in early 2013. There was the the one-hour match was Cena and Shawn Michaels in 2007, but this is one of the longest matches ever on Raw, and that's going to be interesting to see how that third hour does. I'm sure that if you were tuned in the Raw, that this probably kept a lot of people's attention, and the fact that Cena was in the main event, I mean, the numbers bear it out that I, I they're certainly struggling in terms of uh, maintaining that audience, but... That's also a byproduct of trying to get new people over is that you do have to sacrifice numbers and not give up on guys. I don't necessarily mind. I mean, especially if Cena's having great matches like this to end the show. At the same time he's doing that, he's putting over guys like Cesaro, guys like Kevin Owens, giving him that platform in the main event. Um, you know, I wondered how they'd top last week, but they managed to do enough different this week to make it the match even better, I thought. And he gave Cesaro We didn't even mention that he kicked out of an AA during the mm -hmm. match as well, so it gave a ton to Cesaro. You know, so it seems like the company, at least, you know, for for this week, they've listened to the the, the, the audience's demands to push, this, this, uh, to push Cesaro, especially as a babyface. Um, last week, I really thought was... He's had so many breakout matches, but last week was like, you know, another big breakout match. And I thought this week really cemented him. So I'd love to see. Well, you got the follow up. Did. Yeah. I mean, going into that last segment, you thought, man, is Cesaro even going to be on this show, much less confront Owens? Mm -hmm. And they did all of it. So a great main event. If you missed that, highly encourage you to go check that out. That is going to wrap us up for this week's edition of Review of Raw, but we're going to be back on Wednesday. And what are we chatting this week? Wednesday, we will be talking about Conor McGregor, the man who was competing at the UFC uh, big international fight week card this weekend. And uh, we will be looking at the RTE six-part documentary series, The Notorious. All right, so that's coming up Wednesday morning. Go check out LiveAudioWrestling.com. You can subscribe to Live Audio Wrestling on iTunes and catch Review of Raw Tuesdays at 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. Eastern Time here on Fight Network for Way. I'm John, and we will chat with you next week on Review of Raw.